person. Anyone else have any questions about what we learned today? No. Go ahead. Uh, you, the ones who had them or the ones who didn't have them? So the others, the ones who had the oil went inside the wedding. The ones who didn't said, oh, let's go buy some from the store. And when they went to go buy some from the store, the wedding happened without them. It's like, imagine if you were coming here and you left your natal at home. And you came all the way here, but you left it at home. So you said, oh my God, I gotta go home. And then you went home and then we finished the whole Dubai without you. That's what happened with them. They missed out because they weren't ready. So the point is, you need to be ready forever. Just like his mercy endures forever. Do you remember when we said that? Remember when we said Yeah. How many times did you say it? Twelve. Two. <laughs> Twelve times, maybe, maybe more. You said it a lot of times. So that's how many times you need to be ready. You need to always be ready. You have a question? Can you guys not try You forgot? Okay. That's a great question. Are the parables or the stories true or not? Well, what did Pontius Pilate ask Jesus? What is the truth? They are absolutely true, but they are parables. So, we talked about the big ideas, essentialism and functionalism, and we said what they mean, right? Not all microphones are the same, not all lines are the same, not all serpents are the same, not all Ethiopian Orthodox Kamado Christians are the same, not all deacons are the same, not all priests are the same, not all bishops, not all patriarchs are the same, right? Each one is going to have to be asked by our Lord whether they not have they have the oil, whether they have the mercy. So it's true, but it's not essentially true, which means uh, it's not a history book. We're not reading from a history book. We're not reading from a science book. We're reading from the point of view of the function. So it's true because it's what it's teaching you to do is be more like Christ. So in the Western traditions of thought, sometimes they get so confused by, by a person named Plato, and, and that's really where the idea of essentialism comes from, but they get confused because they get stuck and they say, is this true or is it not? How many angels could dance on my finger? Is it 37 or is it 56? And they get distracted by these questions. The real question are what we call food for the soul, which are homilies, food for the soul. When I was a kid growing up, I don't know if they still exist, but they used to have these books called Chicken Noodle Soup for Your Soul. So the food for your soul is how do you live? Christ wants to know how do you live? Remember we talked about Catus Petros, how he gave us the example of the bad lion? Well, if you remember him in the book of Acts, in Gibraltar, he's in jail. Does anyone remember how he got out of jail? No. An angel came and freed him. When the angel came and saved St. Peter, the angel said, he denied he was in Kalpanaga. Go and speak a word of life. If you saw Diakon Lekun when I was done, he said, what did he say to, about me? Did you hear what he said? He said, That means, may God, it's a prayer, may God have you hear his word of life. Why don't you try that? Say, may God have you hear his word of life. May God have you So I hope I answered your question, but it's true in the sense of instruction to life. It's true in that it tells you how to live correctly, in the true way. Even if you, if you study Ge'ez, which I encourage you to do, if you look through, even the language doesn't permit that type of thinking. In English, we have all these different views of, of truth, because it's stuck with Western philosophy. Goodness is so rooted in the Orthodox Church, especially in Ethiopian Eritrea, 
that it doesn't allow you to think a different way. It forces you to think a certain way. So if you say, how do you look up the word for truth? We have words like umet, like aman, like haq. But if you see in the Bible, we don't use those words for truth. The word we use is sirk. Can you say sirk? Sirk. Does anyone know what sirk means? No. Sirk means righteousness, which means being right. Sirk means being right. So the way we talk about truth in this is being right. And you are right when your thoughts, your words, and your deeds are right. Whenever the fathers, our, our fathers, the priests pray for us, they say, may everything that you've done, in your thoughts, words, and in your deeds be forgiven for you. They say that every time at the end of Kaddasi. Everything you do in your thoughts, your words, So the five Konajajit, or the Muslim uh, Nagar, they had a lamp. They had, oh, we're going we're gonna to have more on our lessons today. Can you say Masaro? Masaro. The Masaro is their lamp. Okay? Nowadays, some people like to say Lampadina, but the older, more beautiful and hard word, not a foreign Italian word, is Masaro. They had their Masaro, or their lamp, and in it, they had what's called a wick. A wick is like similar to the twaf that we use. It's something that needs to be lit on fire. So you use the oil so that the fire can start. And when you have the fire, you have a light. And that light is... The biggest reason is because God doesn't make us do everything. Have you ever seen a puppet? Have you ever seen how it works with the strings? Yeah. God doesn't throw strings on you and make you dance around. He lets you make your own decision. So if you let everyone make your decision, some of those decisions are going to be good and some are not going to be good. He wants you to have your decision. He thinks it's more good for you to have your decision and to choose whether or not to do bad or good than if you didn't have a decision. Imagine if he didn't give anyone a decision and he made everybody do the good thing. Would you like that? If he put strings on you and moved you around like this? No, he likes you. He made you in his image and his likeness. So he gives you a decision. He makes you involved in creation and in salvation. He asks you to pray for one another. We pray for all of us here. We pray for those who passed away. Those who passed away pray for us. And we all pray to God. There's togetherness. There's unity, as our brother was mentioning in the title of UOTY. In fact, unity shows up twice. Because Tawahado means united, and united means united. 